Where we at? What you got over there today, player? You and your, you and your funk bag now? Man, you get on TV one time and now you think you, uh, come on, man. You think you better go to Sidefield. Remember that road, this bad, man? You done crossed over already. God That's where you damn. going, man? Now you on your Lenny Kravitz shit again? Now we gotta do it. Come on, J.O.N. Look at the tempo. We been trapping hard in the trap, now you back on this. What the hell? We can't do no trap shit to this shit. Look at this nigga, man. Man. That's the Ariana uh, Grande package. And hey, you man. knew BT would come What's out of that and you Ariana? had that shit ready. Hey, there we go. That's what I'm saying. He like, all right, y'all want nigga shit, all right. <laughs> this nigga tried to go already. That shit five for real. What though. you do with that? This shit right here? Yeah, what you do with that? Blood and then them gonna get high. No, you not. No, you. No, you not. I'm about to tell my boss he fuck that nine to five. No, you not. I know you not. Hey, nigga, work me, no man, stress me out. Come on, come on. Hey, what they doing though? Then I realized that my life's gonna be out. Okay, okay. So I told him I'm coming to work. <laughs> what you say, bro? I said I'm coming to work. Oh, <laughs> coming to work. I hope this nigga fall in my pieces. <laughs> yeah. Where you going? Well, I'm quitting. Uh-huh. And I ain't playing and I ain't bullshitting. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is my last day. Since my last day, and I'ma quit right now on payday. Give a fuck what them folks say, man, I'm out this bitch. I'm tired of working, I'm tired of doing all of this shit. And I ain't mopping no flows, and I ain't locking no doors. They talking about I can't holler at no motherfucking hoes with my uniform on. What kind of shit is that? And when I leave this time, it ain't no coming back. Unless they pay the tax a fee, but uh, one thing they gonna be free of is me. I'll do your job then. <laughs> guess what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> he left, I do that ball. I'm going to do it. <laughs> he ain't coming back. I'm not this bitch. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm through with it. I'm going to do it. That shit hard. <laughs> Somebody I'm need to get right now. I'm going to do it. Somebody needs to hear that. I'm going to run every red light. Somebody needs to hear my bar too. I'm going to do it. Fuck it. I quit. I'm on my third strike. I can't be late. I'm coming to work. I said, you know what? Fuck it. I quit. Have you ever been fired? At the door of your job. Yeah. You thought you were going in. He said, go back out. You like, what that mean? He like, you don't work in no more. I'm going to work. I bet. I'm going to get paid one way or another. Talk your shit. I'm going to work. <laughs> My co-worker said I'm fired. Shut your mouth, nigga. I'm coming to work. Come on then. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Welcome back. I don't know where you've been, but welcome Indeed. back. Like, there's been a lot going on over here. J-O-N, how you living, bro? Look, look, DC, man, look. Man, we got, hold on, man. Give me some serious music right now. Some serious music. Give me some serious, man. Some hunting music. Man, give me some, I need something that's like, some something, you can get, music. something you can get money to from scratch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause, Cause you know, like I guess in the trap today, uh, it's a lot of shit uh, you could say, but I, I really just uh, call the nigga a genius, bro. Take a shit. Like, like, yeah. I want to say like, take a shit. Like a hood mastermind. Cause any nigga that can figure out the type of shit that he done figured out Yo. in America Yo. deserves to be called a genius. Facts. Uh, a phenom. It. Facts. Uh, uh, nigga, you the prototype. I'm talking about for real. <laughs> the epitome. Uh-huh. You get what I'm saying? It's exactly, like, bro. Fact. The shit you're doing by yourself is gonna make the whole world have to look at niggas different. Whatever they thought about niggas, mm-hmm. they gonna have to add some more shit to that. Uh-huh. None other than the Talk living shit. legend, uh-huh. Derek Grace. Yes, sir! Mm-hmm. 
Great father. Great Facts. educator. Facts. Uh, great businessman. Facts. You ain't good at a lot of shit, bro. Hey, gang. And this nigga Teddy. You an you you intelligent motherfucker, man. Thank ain't no you, room for no more tattoos. You wrote everything. Yeah, yeah, no, bro. I mean, I know the face for sure. I ran out of room, yeah. I know. No, they, they said I was crazy, but boy, yeah. I, you, you got me beat. I appreciate it, bro. What was the motivation? Uh, I got the first face tat in 2012. And I had lost uh, a job I had as a 911 dispatcher. A lot of people don't believe I, I had that job. I was a 911 dispatcher. You was a 911 yeah. dispatcher. I was a nigga that answered the phone and say, 911, what's your emergency? And they like, well, I'm hurt, nigga. And you like, what, what, what one you need? Yeah, yeah, so I'm either send you to EMS if it's medical, or Fact. I got to send the boys to the crib if, if it's, you know, some criminal. Did you pressure. ever tell somebody on the 911 call, we finna send them boys? No, man. <laughs> hey, Twelve on the way, man. You gotta flood that shit, bro. Can they cover my black? You mm, said you need help, they cover my black. Nah, bro, nah, bro, on that behalf, I have had like cousins and whatnot that I like just gave a heads up, like, hey, y'all be careful today, cause X, Y, Z coming your way. But Facts. yeah, no, other than that, it was either 911 or EMS. Damn, but gang. yeah, bro. So I lost that job. And I just told myself I was never gonna fuck with the corporate world again. We free to talk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nigga. So I told, I just told myself, bro, I was never gonna fuck with the corporate world again. Uh, unless it, it, it had to be some type of partnership. Basically, I wasn't gonna conform. So I went and tatted my face in 2012 just to make sure like I had to live and, and die by that. And me too, I'm, I'm a procrastinator like a lot of people. So that was one of them things that just, you know, put the battery in my back to really figure shit out on my own. Hey. Hey, yeah. Shit hard, man. Pretty For you to invent a board game, broke books. Yeah, the board game, the book, best-selling author. Uh, yeah, fuck your shit, man. Fuck your, your shit, man. That's what I'm saying. It's like, how much of this shit do you talk about? Man, you, you do. You put us up, bro. I, I really don't. I really don't talk a lot of shit. I don't talk a lot of shit, man. Well, we comedians. Nah, but you that gotta, cool, though. This is what this platform shit. for. You got to talk. You got to stop through here at least once again and talk some shit. I got you right. <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, uh, best selling author, uh, in home baking board game. That's an independent situation we put out. We sold, we done sold like between 50 and 60,000 units independently. Come on. In three years. Another one. Uh, Another one. Come on, man. Yeah, what uh, y'all uh, doing, man? Of course, bro, the, the, the curriculums, the books. Uh, I pride myself on being able to say, like, no, no school in the world can say they raised or taught my young as I did. I don't that shit myself. Talk your, talk your shit! Let's talk about that for just a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk about that. Like, what, at what point did you see that you, like, did you know that school was just not going to give these kids nothing that in they the could? In the curriculum, you right. know that they want to teach an OG. Right. So, bro, my only thing, 13 now. But, like, I didn't know better then. You feel me? So I just put it in school. Like, yeah, that's, that's what we do as adults. We put our children in school at a certain age. But bro, I kept peeping like he would kill the work, but they wasn't really uh, sustaining him mentally. So he was one of the kids that'd do the work, then go break shit, or just get in trouble, or just be fucking around. But he had an amazing grade. So when I peeped that brother started asking the teacher like, "Well, how do y'all challenge him when he get to that place?" So what are y'all doing? She was like, "Well." Basically, I can't do shit if he finishing the test. For the rest of the class, that nigga just got to sit there like a little soldier. You know, wait. At fucking five, six years old, they got to, they got a ball of energy. So, bro, he kept getting the shit. And then I really started looking into what they was teaching them, and I pulled them out of school in second grade, and we just been figuring shit out ourselves ever since. Every, so every, so every year. <laughs> so every year, what, he 13 now? He 13 now. So every year he passed. So between, like, so me and his mama split him. So right. like when he with her, he has to like go back into that world. Right, right. And then when he with me, I kind of like got to damn near undo all that shit and reteach him what I feel like is the real shit he's supposed to have. But his, the rest of his siblings now, like my daughter, she's 10, but she's never been to daycare, no school, no nothing. So, like, I, that's I, I, one badass little like girl, that. bro. You Appreciate saw her you, busting down the, the fucking Man, Mac what? 11 and shit, bro. And she know all the guns and everything. Like, what made you? I ain't mean to cut you off, but what made you incorporate that part into the education? Well, Knowing at a young age, cause you know how that how that shit. Yeah, did. I already know. Right. <laughs> well, uh, I shot two people in 2015. You were talking about that, life. man. You were talking about that yeah, shit, yeah, right? I, I, about, I, 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 nigga, I'm, I'm about to say. Ain't <laughs> finna. Yeah, that's a big ass shit. Right you can't talk hey, we about might need everything. a boom mic. This is a big ass, big ass yeah, shit. Yeah, this shit for real. This the chain that your chain wanna be. 
Yeah, we have to We're gonna have to mic the chain. That's the whole face on that. You're gonna have to actually put the mic on Nipsey. You're gonna have to, you gonna have to, you gonna have to, you gonna have to put the mic on him. Bro, you, can you have to lay your chain on him? So look, your chain got earrings? This motherfucker. This motherfucker got a chain with ears with earrings. With ear. This nigga got a chain with ears with earrings. I don't even know what kind of chain I want no more. That crazy. I can't even go into the jewelry store no more. I'm like, this little ass shit. Sell that shit at no jewelry store. You have to know a jeweler. This little ass shit. Don't be trying to that sell that from his I know a nigga got a chain that learned from his with, grandfather. Ears, with earrings in it. Make my face. Make my whole body. Make my, I want my whole body. I'm going to want my whole body. All right, bet. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna get my, <laughs> I'm gonna get my shit straight. Fuck that bullshit. I'm getting me a chain with Mega Evers on it. No. Who? Exactly. <laughs> you crazy. Yeah. Nick, I'm gonna get the Jesse Owens chain. <laughs> Dark skin diamonds. I would say that, but. And know, I'm gonna have like, some of them gonna be white because it's gonna be like the ashes. Penny chain. Oh, man. When she about to get burnt with that iron. <laughs> Martin Luther that. King smoking a <laughs> cigarette. No. I get that one. Oh, one, two, three, oh. four. Okay, after adjusting the, the you know, the microphone in, in the big chain, we were talking okay. about, you know, the, the gun safety oh. and the gun education, yeah, you know, bro. with the school curriculum. Yeah, so I shot two people in front of her when she was three. So at that point I felt compelled. Like they knew I had guns because I always been a gun collector, but I didn't really like start educating them. I just be like, that's my gun, don't touch it and leave it at that. But once I shot, once that, once that took place in front of her, bro, I just felt compelled to begin teaching her about it. Cause it's one thing to know your pops got a gun and be curious, but you see him use it, you, you finna be super curious. So right. I'm big on preventative maintenance, bro. I just try to get in front of shit before I get to my kids so they could be ready when it arrives. Mm. But to pick up back on the education shit, right? Cause I'm into that. Mm. So how did you get qualified to even have the curriculum that is still on the same qualification as the school system. So when he leveled up, when he went back to school, he was like, yeah, nigga, he in the grade he's supposed to be in. So, all right, bro, so it's two things with that. Right. Um, my stuff has never been approved by their qualification. Mm. Cause like for one, I, I, I'm gonna be real with you, bro, I wouldn't even seek their approval to begin with. Facts. Their curriculum and their thought process come from our grandparents' oppressors. So I don't even wanna fuck with anything they talking about anyway. Talk so shit. I, I did buck them on that end. And I'm not encouraging nobody to do that because it may not work the same way. Right. But you do it how you need to do it. But anyway, I bucked him on that end. So I enrolled him in an online program. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't even remember their name right now, but I, I enrolled him in an online program where like, there was some accountability uh, attendance-wise. Because you know if the children are not in some type of school, then that's when they right. want to send motherfuckers to the house for truancy. So anyway, right. instead of teaching him their curriculum, I taught him my curriculum, but I just marked his paperwork as completed every day. So basically, like... You can't say that. His daddy did his work. We can't say that. You, you had your 14-year-old back in the third grade. Nah. <laughs> we, we can't do that. Nah, bro. We, can't, can't, we can't have your 14-year-old back in the third grade, man. <laughs> they gonna be like, oh, for real? <laughs> Yeah, come on. <laughs> Get your ass in there with them, them two yo, man. <laughs> you in pre-K, mama. Nah, bro. That's, that's really how it went. We, um... I basically, at that point, just Christmas tree, the remainder of his school year, then I started teaching him the shit I felt like he needed. Right. And bro, like, the, the thing was, like I said, in second grade, he was grasping their shit so easily that it wasn't no issue for him to really miss a year of their work, do some real shit, and then right. bounce right back into their system. And, and, and with history, you, you teaching him history. For sure. History, not right. that. Yeah. The motherfuckers who matter. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. So, man, you've been very successful on the business side, too, man. Like, when did that shit start making sense to you? And how did you, uh, and how did you adjust? Because, like you say, you, you had it. You got to go over here on the business side where they look at you uh, first as an appearance before anything. Absolutely. Right. So, bro, uh, I'm not going to lie. I've been entrepreneur since 2012. I really ain't make, to me, make no substantial money till like, year four or five. The first couple of years, I made some bread, but because I wasn't knowledgeable on taxes, I really, like, didn't make that bread. Right, right. You know, right. a nigga just an entrepreneur, he ready to get some money. And then I, I, year one, I only made, like, 23 grand. Year, by year two, though, it was, like, 100 and some change. So, you know, we just feeling like we went until Uncle Sam hit me, and then I had to learn that shit the hard way. So, to me, I really didn't make no substantial bread till like, 2000, maybe, like, 15, 16, between 15 and 17. That's when I was able to like do shit like retire my mama and start like creating an actual company where I'm employing people. Right. Um, and then bro, the second part of your question, you said, 
I was just saying like when it started making sense and like. Bro, I, I would say the first time it really started making sense uh, was 2018. And that's when I touched like, I made my first million plus in like a 12 month span. And then just really started learning like payroll, tax cuts, um, how to just implement certain shit just to get away with as much bread as possible and Uncle Sam get as much, get as little as possible. Mm. So the, basically what I'm asking you now is going from, like you said, 23 mm -hmm. to a million plus. That be money. That be money where we come from. That be like, money. Exactly. Like, <clears throat> smoke on that. that be when mine. you get to this side of the spectrum on the million plus, it's like, what changed? Like, did you did you keep some of the twenty three thousand man set all the way up oh, to the to the, oh, to the million change. and absolutely, a half? Or is absolutely like, not, bro. So I would where, say that's the education part. Because nigga right really think you spend a million on on, on 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 him right here. Gotcha, gotcha. So, bro, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck. When I first bought Nip, Nip head is a kilo. The chain is a kilo. Uh, total, bro, I spent I think sixty three thousand. But because gold has done exceptionally well since then. I know Nip alone worth like 115,000 right Come now. Come on, man. That's a number. You get what I'm saying? So, what I will say on the real side, y'all, is genuinely, I got probably like between 50 and 60 pounds of gold. I've only spent maybe six, seven hundred thousand, but it does have an evaluation of like 1.7, 1.8 million dollars. And that's because gold, it's I want to psych it, but you know, shit just worked in my favor. Exactly. And gold is doing amazingly well. Gold right definitely now. do good. Yeah. Yes, sir, bro. Sure. Boy, that, this and nigga then, right here, and man. Then, bro, to your so. My nigga, work man. ethic never changed. I'm still a workhorse, bro, but one of the, a couple of the biggest things that differentiate me from most people is I don't sit on ideas. Mm -hmm. This niggas right now that's been sitting on an idea for two years, two days. I come up with some shit, I conceptualize it, I'm gonna hit my team, and we gonna jump out the window and execute. Follow up, so, that's the most important part of doing anything. Absolutely. You gotta follow up and follow through. No, for sure, and I, that's why I say like the work ethic, the consistency, that stayed the same, but it was more so on the investment side, so prior to that, like, Books is no different in the streets. You got to re-up, you got to flip, and you got to make your bread back. Facts. So prior to that, I was doing like maybe $3,000 investments, $10,000, never, never, over, over, never superseding 10. But when I came up with the board game in 2018, because we was doing business with China, China basically tells niggas like, you need to order a thousand or better. Don't, right. don't come to me for no goddamn hundreds of <laughs> right. items. They not fucking with you. That shit ain't never gonna get there. <laughs> right, no, it ain't coming. <laughs> right. So bro, like, that's when I really had to invest like two, like, I know that first batch cost me like 270 grand. Mm -hmm. And bro, I ain't gonna lie, from that point on, I just, this shit sounds simple, but people still don't know how difficult it is when you're an entrepreneur and you're independent. Like, right, it's just, all you. Yeah, yeah, just, just bet big and you're gonna get bigger. That sounds simple, but in 2018, bro, that's when I finally did it. And that's when I started seeing millions of dollars. That's the next question I was gonna ask you is like, for the people who, go, who watching, like, what gave you the, the reassurance to bet big like that? Like to take that first step, even being on this side yeah, yeah. where you know you good, it's like, do you still feel like this might be a risk? Man. So bro, that's a good ass question. Um, bro, for me, I feel like men are supposed to be actively taking the risk, right. not only for the, the, the wisdom and the intellectual property they take from it, but for the win, but most importantly, to double back to tell your niggas or your village how to do the same thing. Exactly. So for me, bro, the confidence <clears throat> always come in there that like, I know in my era, I'm 32, but in my era, they gonna be able to say like, bro, I had a cousin or an uncle or a daddy or a brother. I seen that nigga spend a million in a day, so I know it ain't nothing to get a million because I seen my nigga spend it in a 24 hour span. So for me, bro, like I'm always, I'm constantly thinking legacy and I'm constantly thinking about what type of uh, example am I giving my children, you feel me? So if, if, if I could be overly aggressive enough to shoot a motherfucker and, and not have no fear, then niggas should definitely have absolutely none jumping for their vision or their dreams. So for me, bro, it's a no brainer. If you got the bag and you believe in what you're doing, you post a bet big. Hell yeah. Or, or <clears throat> like if a nigga get in the game to play small ball, he don't need to be in the game. If you ain't in that bitch to get a ring at the end of the season, what you signed up for? Exactly. Right. Niggas don't want stats. Real shit. Say I got stats. Niggas just want to be on highlights. I right. want that ring though. I, I, I need that ring at the end of the year. So what, so what was that transition? Because I know you're a businessman, man. But then you got a certain mentality because you, you militant. Mm -hmm. You understand? But what was that transition where you were like, all right, the street shit ain't talking about shit. So, bro, the transition was... Because once everybody, every real nigga that had that, that level mm -hmm. where it was like, that really some bullshit. I'm going to tell you what it was. Uh, in 2009, <clears throat> my right. brother got sent. His original sentence was 65 years. 
they got it reduced to 35, and then they got it reduced to 15. So he's still in there. He's still sitting on that 15. The same year, it was some niggas that I was having issues with. We pressed their line. We ended up catching them somewhere. And niggas stood down, and this same nigga killed like two people probably like a week later. Mm. And the other nigga that was with him killed two children because their mama owed him some money for some dope or whatever. But anyway, we had a run in with three niggas that totally folded and went and killed niggas like within seven days. And I remember telling my cousin, I was like, hey, I think we might have to move a little different because them niggas probably only didn't have them guns because we was in the middle of the mall. If them niggas had to call us outside, that would have been a whole different conversation. I probably would have got shot or would have had shot somebody way earlier than right. I did. So, bro, that was really the wake-up call is we was out there fucking with people like... I, we, we never started shit, but we definitely was into finishing it. But still... Right. Situation that you avoided was like, yo... Yeah, that's how I opened it like, bro, if he had to caught you like maybe five miles away from here at a corner store, right. y'all shit would have ended totally different. Right, right, and right. It showed me too, like... Niggas may be pussy, but when they right. got their pistol, like we know, niggas get unpussy. See, niggas like, niggas don't understand, okay, you know how it feel to be up on some shit, but have you ever been on the other end? No, bro, I've been on the other end. You feel on the other end, ugly, boy. I, I used to be an aggressive <laughs> ass nigga ugly, with boy. my gun. And I remember like one time being super aggressive, and, and it was in broad day, and I met a nigga that was like, really with that shit. More into the shit than I was, right? Because <laughs> I showed my shit. And I'm like, I'm, I'm woofing, because they stood down. I get my baby mama to come, let's get the fuck out of here. Bro, that nigga pulled out a 38 in broad daylight and emptied that shit in the middle of the street. And I was like, yeah, he's different. Yeah. He <laughs> I, look, I wouldn't try to shoot a nigga low key. That right. nigga didn't give a fuck. Like, Cause when I pulled mine, I basically had him. He couldn't do nothing. Right. That nigga politely walked to his car, came out in the middle of the street and stood like this and let that bitch go six times. And it's different when the bullet coming your way. Right. That, that heart beat a lot faster. I'm, I'm screwed up. I'm like, drive this motherfucking car. This nigga shooting at us. Like, I'm trying. <laughs> you want to be mean to the niggas. Right. Like, now I want to blitz me to drive. Look, now you thinking about it. Like, I should have did. I should have handled that differently. No, bro. Definitely home. It was like, bro, there's some niggas out here that's they more crazy than you. So if you ain't into what they into, just leave them niggas alone. <laughs> that's a motherfucking <laughs> gladiator sport right there. That gay shit. That gay shit. What? Yeah. We went to go fight some nigga got stabbed. I told my partner, I said, we are losing. You understand me? <laughs> We need to get the fuck out from down here. You understand? Yeah. We gotta go. These niggas on a whole nother level. These niggas wanna kill. They don't wanna fight. Yeah, nah, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I learned my lesson. I'm out there talking about this. These niggas talking about some, all right. I'm like, okay. Yeah, bro. I learned my lesson quick with that, though. It's, it's niggas out here way crazier than me. Yeah, but that's see, that's just the transition. Man. See, we learned from it. You feel what I'm saying? We took the life lessons and, and we we put it over here. So what we learned from the street and we go over here with the business side. It's like right. a time ten because we willing to learn the game. But now that we got the street hustles and the streets in, yeah, it's bro. like, boy. Yeah, and that and I, I feel like that element makes us fearless. So like when you fucking with a nigga that wasn't scared to die, he not scared to lose a hundred thousand because he know he could get that shit right back or. He got the experience and the mentality that he gonna keep grinding till he get the shit back. Facts. So yeah, bro, that, that's another thing that helped with the corporate structure and just whether it be brokering business or conversations or leverage. Them motherfuckers in them suits are not accustomed to eye contact and motherfuckers with their chest out and their chin up. So when you could do that and articulate, nine times out of ten, shit gonna work in your favor. Talk your shit. Like people who come from my side of the world got an element and an animal instinct that they just simply don't have can't understand and they fold and pretty much give us what we want when we turn it up. That's real. Man, speak on the importance of a network, like the strength of having good motherfuckers beside you who believe right. in what you got going on and shit right. like that. Right, on that 1,000%. Uh, Team. I love popping shit, but my company is like 80% woman, woman ran. As you see, like, my lady right there, more women, uh, Tavi, Khadija, Jasmine, but... Um, I mean, shit, I got five daughters. I don't know. Women just in, in my life for some reason in abundance. But nah, bro, uh, I feel like the network is super important. And I feel like it's important. Like one thing I tell people with building the team is you got to find motherfuckers that's just crazy or more crazier than you. And when I say crazy, I mean by society standards. Because if a nigga say at 12, I'm going to have 100 million by 20, people going to call you crazy. But for me, bro, fucking with people who believe in what I believe in or they just attach themselves to my vision is always a win. I don't want to be around no niggas with the what if shit or maybe we should or nah. When I say go, we just gonna fucking go. Like my cameraman, bro, he a dog. Like if I'm like, bro, get under the jet and get this motherfucker upside <laughs> down, bro, gonna get under the jet and catch that motherfucker upside down. So bro, I love surrounding myself with 
<laughs> no, nah, we got other motherfucker that need to hear that. <laughs> but no, nah, bro, I Get love, your ass on I the love plane, surrounding myself nigga. with just motherfuckers who, who, who is just as crazy as I am, bro. Exactly, the 85 South Show. Speaking of which, welcome back to the 85 South Show. You dirty two sock win, motherfucker. For two days, two I know you, you sitting days. at the house watching this shit with a big ass undershirt on. For what? <laughs> Don't tuck it in now, nigga. Don't big tuck it in. Big undershirt wearing ass. We got Derek Grace up in here with us talking big shit, man. What would you tell somebody out there? Because it's, it's, it's maybe one or two street niggas out there who listen to this show with different ears, man. It's like, what would you tell somebody who might have, who might be up, who trying to who trying to leave that shit alone and, and be the right. next Derek Grace? What kind of advice do you give people when they ask you how you do it? What should I do? Okay, bro. Uh, one thing I would tell them is first you got to create your why. You feel me? Because that why going to keep you driving. When you got a headache, migraines, you ain't making no paper. Purpose. Marketing, marketing ain't hitting on shit. Advertising, nobody fucking with you, right? That why is always going to be important. Like one of my whys is on my wrist. <coughs> it say do it for E. That's my brother that got 15 years. So it's been, it's been a lot of times that I've been unmotivated, not feeling like it. But I remember I want brother to come on to a million dollars cash a great deal of real estate and just fucking just party for the next five years if he wants to. So I'm reminded, but you got to establish your whys. Uh, I tell everybody, you got to create rituals, right? L life is fucked up at times. Mm -hmm. you feel me? It's gonna be, it's, 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 mentally, this bitch can be draining. So you have to create rituals in which you resort to <laughs> when you got to, you know, when life gives you too much resistance. And I tell you this, next time you have a happy day, a super fucking amazing day, you need to assess and identify what you did that made your day so fucking amazing. Because when life gets too heavy, niggas just got to retreat, go to their happy place, re-up, rejuvenate, and come out and keep fighting, nigga. But you have to fight, especially if you a man. You got to get up off your motherfucking ass and you got to fight. So for me, y'all, you know, take my advice. I like candles. I like slow music. I have a whole lot of sex. I do a whole lot of drugs and I spend a whole lot of time with my chick. <laughs> That's my happy place. So when anything in the world pissing me off, I retreat to those people, to those things, and I come back out swinging the next day. And thirdly, uh, just a plan of action, man. Like, I don't give a fuck if it's a six-month plan, two-month plan. You're going to have to implement some discipline. I tell everybody this, detach from things of the world. You ain't going to be nothing. You never going to be bigger than this bitch if you're of it. You feel me? So a lot of y'all niggas know the stat lines or the playoffs. You know who fucking who, who album the hardest. But you don't know the last time your child had a nightmare. You don't know what the fuck you're going to be doing in the next six months. So fasting is super important, y'all. Again, you're not going to be anything bigger than this bitch if you're still of it. Exactly. You fast? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm actually fasting right now. We, uh, we, uh, we've been doing no meat. I've been on and off sometimes because the vegan shit get boring. Right, but, right, right. Yeah, nah, Do you, like, stop fast. yourself from eating at a certain time, like 8 o'clock? So not necessarily stop, but we, we typically don't start. So like basically the way our mornings work is you have to drink a certain amount of water and you have to have a bowel movement before you even put anything back in your body. So we typically going to just fill up with water in the morning, maybe fruit, make sure we use a bathroom, and then basically you, quote unquote, allowed to put something back in your body because you pushed out what was previously in there. But yeah, bro, we, we have rituals, we have systems, we have a whole setup. It, Thank you, babe. I ain't gonna lie to bro. Like, Up your shit. To everybody, that shit be looking easy, y'all, but mentally, you have to go through a lot of changes. Like, even on the business side, like, that's why the fast and help with the discipline. Right. Niggas don't know how to just grind and stay still. Like, what? Nigga wanna go ball with the money or show the money. Like, nah, nigga, I dare you to go run up a million and then go spend that whole fucking million back into your business. Right. So in two years, you, you playing with 10 million. So, discipline, fasting. All that shit's super important, bro. You gotta yeah. stop doing shit. You got a book. I mean, you before you, you can start doing, doing shit. Yeah, book, yeah, yeah, book, hey, nigga. Hey, buy that bitch now. Nah, bro, you ain't, you ain't gotta look it up. I brought all y'all care packages. Where that motherfucker? I'm gonna read that bitch. Stop nice. playing. Jazz. Stop playing. What? Jasmine, you bring me that badge, please. Highly stop intelligent playing. nigga from the hood that'll bust your ass. You understand? Man, talk about your hood before we talk about all the, the exciting shit. We got some people out there on the Where hood you from? Where you bro, from, bro. gang? Throw your hood up. You gotta I, rep the set. Yeah, listen, y'all, this is where I'm from. Hold, hold on, let, let Jasmine drop the badge. People been asking me this question for the long time. <clears throat> Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> You're so helpful and amazing. I appreciate you. Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. Hold on, bro, let me make sure. All right, bro, this is yours right here. Okay. Okay, I thought it was my bag. Oh, shit. <laughs> I went to grab that bitch. That bitch ain't with me no more. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. You got Jazz. 60 pounds of books. <laughs> 
Bro, this shit right here. My boy. And it's, uh, this bag for Chico. I don't Chico hands, so we can just put that one on there. Yeah, we're gonna make sure you get it. Right, yeah, bro. So this the, that yellow one, the one that made me a best-selling author. So these books right here, these, these right here are really easy, bro. So what I did is just drop the piece of game on each page. It ain't a long read. Like, you literally can pick that bitch up once a day, catch some game. Somebody bring me the sharpie, man. I got you, bro. And then, now this one right here, that's a 700-page autobiography. That's the first book I ever wrote, and that shit is just about... You know, my crazy ass uh, upbringing yeah, and yeah, all the no, wild no, shit I used to do with the BMs and, right, right, and right, right, right. shooting people and all type of fun shit. You gotta go get my brother book. It talk about it getting stabbed up and all that. Oh, yeah, sir. I gotta check it out. Yeah, sir. Hey, what's up? It's Carlos Miller. Now is the time more than ever to go ahead and get yourself some blue chew. It's fall, it's getting cold outside, it's getting dark earlier, so you know what that means. A lot more hunting is going on, so if you want to be ready, blue chew is perfect. That's right, Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. The best part is all done online, so it's no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the farm. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Yeah, that's right. Try Blue Chew for free. When you use promo code 85SOUTH at checkout, just pay $5 shipment. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepare and ship direct to your door in a discreet package. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85SOUTH to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Hey, it's me, Clayton English. It's that time of year again, and seasonal depression is real. BetterHelp can assist with achieving your goals and the happiness you deserve. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly or video phone sessions. So you won't have to ever sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. The service is available for clients worldwide and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it is professional counseling done securely online. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to charge counselors if needed. Visit betterhelp.com backslash 85 south. That's better H E L P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Man, scars of wheels and go get that out right now on Amazon. Scars of Oh, look wheels. at this shit, DC. Oh, yes, sir. That's I hard. need that. Oh, yeah, bro. We're going we're gonna to jump on that in a second, too. That's going to get us to the Hebrew. Billion. You Hebrew? Nah, bro. You know Hebrew? Uh -huh. Bro, I, I, I have no religious. Uh, no religious grounds whatsoever. Ground whatsoever. Do you seek for it? Bro, no, bro, absolutely not. Bro, you, you got don't toys seek for it? and everything, uh, bro. No. Say it again, bro. Robotics. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's Grace Bodies, bro. So I brought y'all some complimentary robots for the for y'all other youngins. Uh, brought all the curriculums, bro, the books, the in home banking board game. But you do believe in God though though? No. You don't? For real? Right. That concept, uh. What concept? We the gods. We good. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we have to have a talk. Oh, bro. Yes, all, all sir. All my good and bad in my life yes, is sir. a direct reflection of my thoughts, my actions, and my words. So if For I real. have a fucked up day, it's my fault. And if that bitch was amazing, it's For my real. fault. You need a physical confirmation. Absolutely. No, sir. Listen, bro. Ooh, come on, hey, somebody. Look, bro, you my, got to hey, jump listen. out down faith, nigga. No. <laughs> hey, you talking about you better fly. Bro. Me, hey, me and, my, yeah. me and my security in the back. Shout, yeah. out, shout out to Lockdown Brown. Lockdown was happening. He said he's going to present me some physical evidence on it, and then I'm going to go from there. So physical evidence? Yeah, you need sure. physical. You need to be shown to you. Take me to Why? the king, if, bro. So, I but look, see it. But look what I'm saying. If you don't see it and you don't believe it. Nah. Bro, you got the whole blueprint talk. right we here. Talk. <laughs> you an intelligent motherfucker. We going to talk. It's long, so much, brother. It's so much good shit to read in here. <laughs> But fly check this out. How we made eleven million dollars in the pandemic. Come on, man. Who don't want to see that? No, Who don't no. want to read that? Appreciate it, bro. How did you make eleven million dollars in the pandemic? Uh, 
know, but stay down. I know, bro. Just one quick answer is when you find uh, a solution to a, a problem of a mass amount of people, you bound to get a bag. And that's just, it's simply, for me, bro, I focus on the relatability when I teach. I'm able to break down the concepts that confuse a lot of people in a real simplistic way. And I practice inclusion when I teach. So I'm gonna give you enough game for your babies, yourself, any sense of shit you can give grandma and unk. So bro, when you practice in inclusion, you bound to spread faster anyway because you're hitting multiple demographics. If I'm, if I'm giving you a curriculum on how I'm an awesome dad, then the one on guns, then one on parenting, then one on finances, you feel me? You got six, seven different demographics of people who, who gonna invest in that information because it's clicking on so many, so many different levels. You know what I like about this? Is this this real, real specific? It ain't a lot of. It's not. It's not like a lot of these self-help books where it's a lot of guesswork attached to oh, it. Yeah, no, you no, get no, what no, I'm bro. saying? You're and it's like, to get to the point. like it's right here. Right. It's right there. It's like these are questions you should ask your kids. How to deal with you know, anger, all that inclusion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Teach you get one what I'm thing saying? About it, you got a structure. You got a structured foundation. For sure. real. You see what I'm saying? But I think that what people feel to realize, that's how you gotta get shit organized through structure. If you ain't got no infrastructure, people don't even know what infrastructure is. That's a that's the even breakdown how you even live, fool. You feel me? You no, just bro, up breathing. Bro, that's a fact. It's like <laughs> I tell everybody, like, time is the biggest asset. So I'm a I'm a convenience man. So like we got the yard people, yeah, for sure, bro. Bro, like, I'm just on that real quick. When I say inclusion with business, that's what I mean. Those bodies of work will outlive my existence simply because I attach my children to everything I ever made. Man, so you gotta drop. Gotta let Where us is this available at right now? What's that, bro? All of this. Oh, Where are uh, the books? Derrickgrace two dot com. D e r r i c k. No websites. He ain't worried about nothing. But yeah, bro, I've always been about inclusion. So you'll see the board games got the babies. Each book got the babies, but. I want to make sure, like, establishment-wise, <coughs> the family face is going to be relevant, you feel me? Right. Until we just decide to stop for the simple fact that I incorporate them in everything. Right. Do you believe anybody can make a million dollars? Anybody? Anybody. Absolutely. In this day and age, absolutely, bro. Mm-hmm. Technology and social media, hell yeah. If you want it, if you want yeah, it, yeah, man. Yeah, you want enough. it, you'll go get yeah, it. You go you definitely grab that bag. Would you recommend people try it? To pe- for people to try it? Try it. Hell yeah, I would recommend everybody to try it. Nigga get money, it's a better economy. Cause niggas coming up with shit and more shit for you to buy, more shit for you to use. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you got money, you just a nigga with money just buying shit. Right. You ain't never doing nothing with your money, you just buying shit. Definitely gotta stimulate the economy. Come on, man. You, wh- who are you? What identify you? You just a motherfucker breathing, buying shit. You'd be surprised, man, how many people are just here. And no. just doing, it's just going through the motion, like, of what they, like you said, of yeah, just bro, what they know, problem, or what they've been taught, or what they saw. It Like, nobody yeah, ever that, even took a chance on themselves like that. Do you think we as a people need to be more, you know what I'm saying, aggressive on those teaching and doctrines with, amongst each other? Because we got that crab in the, in the barrel shit, like, we don't want to see a nigga win, and right. we just stick to what we know. Like, like you say, you scared to bet on yourself. Right, right. You'll stack all that money, but you won't even put that money into yourself and do so. <clears throat> and bro, I think that's a direct reflection of the lack of self-love that people have. You feel me? Because a nigga go get a room at the Ritz-Carlton and tell a nigga, don't jump on my bed, it's a fucking Ritz-Carlton, bro. It's a five-star hotel. Bro. A nigga will valet his car. A nigga will purchase the finest of the finest in weed. But if you ask a nigga how much he invested in books, the conversation probably going to go different. Yeah. How much has he invested in classes, of course, <laughs> seminars to just... You know, ask a nigga, do he got a free library card? The conversation different, but a nigga stand outside a club. You got a library card? Of, no, I got a library in the crib. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But a nigga stand outside a club three times in a month. So to me, bro, it's a lack of self-love. Like, I know a lot with, with our culture, we see value in everything except ourselves. You know what I mean? Like, we'll, we'll spend our last, so we'll die to be a part of everything except our own goddamn family and ourselves. Good facts. Fact. Just going back, bro, like, so I can answer this question too, now that we're here. When you mentioned the hood thing, right? Right. This is where I get really confused with the hood shit because number one, if we don't own nothing in the hood, we just providing it with free advertisement. Niggas be hollering about culture vultures, but niggas don't understand like, you spotlight <clears throat> your hood every time you put it on social media, but you don't benefit from the spotlight when the tourists who hearing about it a million times wanna come visit that bitch and stimulate that economy because there's no ownership. So at that point, 
you just raising the tourist rate for a city that don't give you shit anyway, and then and then you're not even able to capitalize off the visits to the hood. Like, just think about hoods that's been publicized at a certain point, and now niggas want to go visit and now treat it like a tourist spot. Every I'm sure it's like <laughs> that in the A. Niggas right. just want to come to because they heard this shit a hundred times in a song. Right. But if, if the niggas making that same music have no ownership, then there's no benefit. You just you just free mascots at this point. Right. A nigga gonna come to the A, pull up the little five points, take twenty pictures buy some shit from a white-owned company and then drive back to where the fuck they came from. <laughs> and we still just outside talking about the hood. Right. Yeah. That's facts. And then to answer your question, bro, I tell everybody this when they ask where I'm from. I am from my mother's vagina. That's the only thing I'm going to claim. And I feel like niggas get so caught up in claiming cement that they forget to actually cement their legacy. Imagine a nigga knowing you for your hood when you die, but we don't know what the fuck you all last name is. Your, your children mean nothing to the neighborhood because you didn't do anything substantial. So for me, right. bro, I never really got into, and not knocking nobody that is, but I never really got into the claim of anything. Like, niggas just gonna hear grace. That's my only, I got that shit. That's all I do is wear my own shit and promote my own shit. So right. if it ain't unlearn and relearn, or my grace tribe is grace, 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 grace bodics. Grace Essentials, DZ TV. <laughs> when I leave this bitch, I need niggas to know grace. So when my children go places, my old lady, they still gonna be able to leverage that name and have their motherfucking way everywhere they go. Yo, shit. We, we can't, like, right now, bro, when I get jets, they, we got such a relationship now that they just give me the jet and have me pay later. I can't go in that bitch and be like, yeah, I'm from 42nd and Fletcher, let me get it. Nah, we don't know who the fuck that is, but them graces, though, right. oh, them niggas good over here. Your, your pops did a lot of business. Y'all get on, get on here and get up out of floor. Mm. So, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm from no hood. I'm, I'm, right. I'm from... Straight Derek. from the coach. I'm from Derek, Big Going Derek crazy. Nuts, and I came out of Pam Vagina, and I just came here to start fucking shit up. You want your ass to stay here, stop doing drugs too, nigga. I remember that shit, nigga. Don't What's do no drugs. So, bro, bro, look, when, when you say drugs, what you referring to? Because I, oh, I think a lot of shit that's classified as oh, drugs. Oh, shit. Nah, because my boy was like, shit, I do drugs, and that shit stuck with me. I was like, what? You know what I'm saying? I can't let my boy do drugs. You feel what I'm saying? No, bro, we, uh, I stick to acid, weed, and marijuana. Weed and marijuana. Shrooms. Yeah, just weed I mean, and marijuana. I mean, I'm tripping. I'm high now. <laughs> <laughs> weed and marijuana. I stick to acid, shrooms, and weed. There you go. Same no Yeah, yeah, yeah. My okay. shit is all natural. All natural. I'm, bro, you had me fucked up. I was like, weed and marijuana. I was like, what I been smoking? What the fuck? <laughs> so what ganja did they give me? So what ganja? Yeah, bro, me, me, me and the wife took some edibles on the way here, so I'm feeling, this is my second time, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling real good right now. Little edible kick in. Yeah. Welcome to the that. trap, man. Appreciate we had bro. to get you because I heard you about to retire. You ain't giving up no more free game. So, bro, this, uh, this is the thing, though. You done? Actually, yeah, bro, I started teaching in August. Like, I'm, it's going to be motherfuckers in the comments on this video that's going to be like, fuck all y'all because I've been trying to buy this shit from this nigga for two months and he won't sell it to me. So no, nah, bro, like what, what I just gave y'all, that's not even available no more. I dried up the whole website um, and we focusing on DGTV, which is us launching our own independent network. So right. I'm transitioning from the literature world classes, courses to running my, just having my own complete network and just being able to do cool shit, say whatever the fuck I want to say. You can't block my live. You can say whatever the fuck band. you want to say on here. We don't yeah, give yeah, a fuck. Sure, sure. We don't give a fuck. I got you. We don't give Hell a yeah. damn. <laughs> Big pussy bitch. You heard what he said? <laughs> you big pussy bitch. <laughs> you big flat back camel looking. And I eat that pussy, so I don't know what he talking about. Cause I'm exactly. big old pussy. Weak. Sometimes I just have to look at the camera and say some shit sometimes, cause people, people be forgetting. You off sometimes. I get pissed off. I understand. Cause they don't even understand. Yeah, bro. I, I have a similar tactic. Uh, I, I like to troll on social media, so. Sometimes I just put up outlandish things. Or I may question religion and whatnot. Just For real. We're going to have a sit down. We're going to have a talk. Yeah. We're going to have a talk. I'm with it, bro. I love this shit. I want to hear it. I want to hear it from the physical confirmation people. I got, bro, that's what I want, too. I want to hear it from that, that, I want to hear it. Girl, I'm with you. I don't need a physical. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you one. Okay. One little simple thing, right? Let me hear it. Air. What about it? You breathe it, right? Absolutely. You know it's there? Yeah. Can you see it? I can feel it. Hmm. <laughs> I can talk, feel it. Talk somebody. I you can, can feel you it. You can though. feel it. You can and if feel it's it. It's all outside, I definitely can see it. You, when I get close to the mirror, I can see it again. Well, it's in, it's in, it's in formations of how what? <sighs> Bro, Come it's right on, there. somebody. This shit can't be made up. Hey, <laughs> hey. Bro, I can see it and I can feel it. Give me my book. 
<laughs> we finna go to class. <laughs> Hallelujah. But no, nah, bro, that's a physical thing. I can see and feel that. No, nah, that more definitely. You know what I'm saying? Faith is, you know what I'm saying, daring the eyes to go beyond. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Daring the soul to go beyond what the eyes can see. Faith is what you make it. That's the hardest shit since MC Ren. Great man said that. His name was Andre 3000. Correct. Yeah. But you know, anything is real if you believe it. Facts. Bro, I agree a thousand percent. So like, I'm big on manifestation and speaking certain things into my life. Like, I'll lean Me too. On that. I fuck with manifestation. See, but see, what that one, that one thing about being aggressive and being a hustler, mm -hmm. if you already know you gonna, I'm capable of doing what the fuck. Ever. Right. And if I get a plan and I get people to support the plan, mm -hmm. nigga, it's gonna work. Right. <laughs> so bro, that's what I mean. Like that, that's exactly what I mean. Like I don't I don't need to rely on the outside deity for that support because I got that shit covered. Exactly. You feel me, bro? To, to, I, I, to me, it's no different than when like somebody go to the hospital and the surgeon say they life and they like, thank God. No, bro, the surgeon wouldn't pay his dues for 10 years. And bring your ass back to life while you was on the hospital bed. Understand? So, so spirituality, you don't believe in no spirits and none of that. Uh, like that they exist. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, okay. So, so like we alive right now. Absolutely. Are we? A dead body just can't wait to fuck up. But are we? Where though? that soul go? Nigga, we could just be a. Where thought. that soul go? Bro, could you can't, be, they still trying to make machines to pump that motherfucker heart back up. I'm telling you, so bro, bro, we could just be a thought. What if this is all some shit that's going on in somebody's brain, which is in a jar, it's like plankton. downstairs on a shelf? Plankton. Exactly. Well, bro, this is my theory. It's like a room full of motherfuckers with that room that they had on The Simpsons with all them computers. Right. And this is just a big simulation, and they just be purposely dropping certain shit in the game to see how they love. Sims, which is us, gonna react to shit. I be feeling like so you that. Think, so you think when the, when, the, when, the, when the soul gone, it just it evaporates? Uh, no, bro, I do feel like we may dwell somewhere else. Right. But I also do feel like it won't be heaven nor hell. I don't, I, I, I will say this, bro, the Bible to me has some great game in it. It has well, some great thing. principles. But bro, mm -hmm. I, I just, it's certain, just certain shit I can't subscribe it just, it, to. See, like, in the Bible, in the Bible, it's more so got prophecies and it's based off interpretations. Mm -hmm. You see okay. what I'm saying? So if the master or the teacher is teaching and you're being misunderstood or being disinformed or misinformed, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Because disinformed means deliberately misinforming you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Then you have to associate yourself with others to based on, you know what I'm saying, to gather the true knowledge of what that Bible. Because one thing about it, they done tried to Turn it upside down, and you can't, you can't knock the truth. I got you, bro. And I think, it, I think that just depends upon what you subscribe to as the truth. Facts. Because I feel like I am the Alpha and Omega. I'm the source. Mm -hmm. I feel like all life comes from me. Like I am that 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 oracle. I'm this I'm the shit that everything flows from. So for me, I never I never figured out or got to a place where I felt like you don't think that you may be, you know what I'm saying, like. Prophetic, like profound, like you may be the divine one. Yeah, that's because my pops raised me that way and my mom was on my ass. I can't, I just, I I just know for that, bro, I don't get the credit to nobody but myself and the people that brought me here. For real? Yeah, yeah. Bro, let, let me ask you a question. Right. What's the difference between a man in a suit jumping in a pew and a man with torn clothes that's jumping up outside talking to himself that's dirty? A man in a pew ain't teaching them folk what that Bible really, really saying. You come, you talking to a Christian slash. I used to be a Christian, I believe in 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 the in the what it what it is when they say uh uh when you believe in when you believe in Jesus, you believe in 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 in, in what? Trinity. The 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 not not the Trinity. No. Huh? Holy Spirit. Not Holy Spirit, you believe in what was his his teaching? He was teaching Christ, but you believe in Christ, you believe in Jesus, anywho. Mm -hmm. But I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Okay. This is basically what the Bible who's Who's really what the Bible talking about? All right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cause you you think no folk was standing in who 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 Moses went to go say? In 110, 15 degree that? weather. Yeah, bro. I'm still trying to figure out like how they put mosquitoes and elephants and all this on the ark at the same time and wasn't no beefing, when there wasn't no clashing. Right. Everybody just coincided, but in 2021 they actually eat each other for a means of survival. Those are the lost Gentiles. It said in the Bible that they were gonna do that. 
Look, bro, look, if it's on the Bible talk, you got me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got I, the, I tried to read that shit one time I ate, and I was like, this, this ain't nothing but a cycle. This don't make sense to me. Grandma, I'm putting this book down, and I ain't never figured back up. Christianity, you believe in the life of Christ. That's what I meant to say, okay. just in that form or fashion. But the, 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 the cycle, it's a reliving cycle. We're doing the same thing, it's just in a different... It's, it's coded, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so, it's society based right now. Don't let that buildings and all these talk buildings and shit fool you. Yeah. It's the same thing going on, it just suited up in a different way. You feel what I'm saying? I agree with that. But that's, like I said, bro, it has some good principles in it, some facts. good truth. Facts, facts. But I know for me, like, I didn't need the Ten Commandments to tell me like that shit not still. Like I know that. But shit the crazy part mind. about it, you. But that. the crazy part about it, you doing it though. What you mean? You that whole your the way of life that you living, the rituals and all that. Yeah, yeah, you gonna sure. talk it without even knowing that you doing it. You doing it. Yeah, no, bro. That's why I say like one of the biggest things I took from the Bible was the gift of discernment because I definitely feel like I got that. But I ain't gonna lie, some of the other parts in there when niggas had 800 wives and all this other shit, I was like, bro, that's Understood. Just, now, that's it's, 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 it's crazy. No nigga was going in there. They got sisters and all. Like, you like, who oh, love? You feel bro, me? I mean, babe, who, who was the one dude who had. Which one? We was talking the other day, he had like 600 wives. He's like, how is he fucking Ooh, all that? Abraham, Abraham went basically. crazy. But see, that's not. Abraham went crazy. But see, at that point, we had, to, we had to populate. You feel bro, what I'm saying? You can't. She was crazy back then. You had to walk three miles to go find your wife. She was real. I was in a day. To fuck 600 women and maintain all them personalities. Them niggas were living that life now, my niggas. God said, hold up, y'all got to live at 125. <laughs> y'all tripping. <laughs> we got to cut the lifespan a little bit. I mean, y'all it's, living it's, live it's, possible. Possible. it's possible to have 600 hoes. Did, they didn't yeah. say they all stayed in the same house. We had some hoes over here. We had some hoes over there. Nigga, if Moses can walk to Egypt, bro, Abraham can have 600 hoes. I how, had to tell you, his whole how do you nigga. Nurture I didn't want to say that he hoe, but it's not, that would hit, that would hit Kunky Mountain. It's not that you nurture 600 of them. It's like 570 of them hoes was independent. It's a nation. <laughs> I'm talking about these motherfuckers. They work. You, these motherfuckers who had jobs in that time, they was making bread and Good bringing money. and shit. Good money. It was a lot of shit going on. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I mean, I feel like they might have just, you know how they just be bluffing? Yeah, yeah. You, find, you walk past a nigga right in the Bible and be like, hey, my boy, tell him I had sex on that hole. <laughs> <laughs> on me, on me. Hey, for me, if you fuck with me, you know I got them that hoes, and nigga might have had sex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you put two both zero. Nigga, this shit going to be lasting for all eternity. You think it you going to be like, nobody going to listen to a nigga who only had sex on. It might have been over the span. Right, right. I'm that sure 200 sense. of them wives didn't talk to him no more. It ain't like he nah, was acting with them. Nah, ain't they go cap on a hole, boy. They was sending them all. He was like, eh, now you. Now this had a time like where, that. you know, it wasn't a lot going on, right. so it ain't like you could get jammed up. What a bitch gonna read some hieroglyphics? <laughs> oh, oh, so you been with Sheba? <laughs> 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 Who you gonna believe, me or them old ass hieroglyphics? That makes sense, bro. Go to the temple. Cause they did say they was living and be like 700 back Please right? go you to the pyramid, I'ma eat your phone. You gotta understand, phone. they would find the skulls of a nigga tall in hell, man, we don't eat, but like you say, you fasting. Right. You, doing, you doing the actual spirituality shit, you see what I'm saying? You doing right. Just to, just to, so, I can, so I can continue to evolve into the God of my world. Hey, That's understood. exactly what you're doing, man. Long you as you stay, man, you doing, like you said, you practicing your own form of it. Mm. But you know, whatever works for you. Hey, you done, you might have found the, the the closest shortcut to God to get there and not even know it. Mm-hmm. Shit. See, it is what this it is. Shit that was, it was destiny, it was divine. You feel what I'm saying? He guided your footsteps. <laughs> oh, that's what it was? I was most dead. Okay, okay. Hey, man. I don't, dead. I don't, hey, man. Well, whoever <laughs> is, is the creator of, of put you this shit West together. Lose. Whoever put this shit together, <laughs> yeah. whether he did or he didn't. Somebody made this shit happen or something. He did. Them motherfuckers bad. Yeah. Think of the shit that happened, nigga. You got nuts, right? You oh. fuck a woman tonight and you put sperm inside of her. Another motherfucker coming out. And then, then, then this time. nigga about to swim in some liquid in her stomach for na- Come on, man. I'm talking about literally breathing. Nigga. Amphibian. You don't think babies are amphibian? Come on, man. God, this nigga cold, man. This nigga invented lungs. We be How the fuck did he know you need some lungs, intestines, gallbladders, and shit? Hey, bro, I've asked myself the same question. We, okay, got, we got a belly button. That shit ain't pun. Touch right. your belly button right now. That shit, that shit sensitive. This is how cold God <laughs> is. The nigga made giraffes. The fuck we needed some giraffes for? <laughs> At the top of the tree. 
Come on, man. Come on, man. I think giraffes is just horses that God messed up on. <laughs> I can believe that, bro. <laughs> he like, hold up, this ain't what I thought it was gonna look like. It look like the lion thing. <laughs> The fuck is an octopus, man? Don't nobody even know what that shit is. <laughs> so, bro, let me ask you a question. When it rhinoceros and dinosaurs, with the with the whole God concept, so how can how do how can we logically believe that he's able to answer all those phone calls he get on a daily and nightly basis? He ignored most of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you say That's how? my exact sentiments, bro. He he ignored most of it. So, like logically, as a people. How do we genuinely believe that we speaking to somebody that's gonna put us on the waiting list to then soon come answer our shit? That's because we don't believe in nothing here. mightier than us. It's other God then already that's gave us what we asking for. He before we even asked, like he knew before we knew that we was gonna need the shit. The shit already on the way. Mm -hmm. He's just trying to see what you gonna do in the meantime. It's like you might figure this shit out before the real blessing come. I got you. But it's like. You know what I'm saying? Well, we bro, really... can you imagine the diabolical process behind and he, and he wants you to call it name. Knowing some shit before it happened and intentionally fucking it up and then watching it unfold neg in a negative manner? But you can't. What you mean, watching it unfold in a negative manner? Like, bro, if I knew all before all, uh -huh. I wouldn't send my son to go get killed. I would have just eradicated the bullshit and we went on about our day. But see, that's just like the Matrix. Just good intuition. One action gonna lead to another action. <laughs> that's you good might intuition. save your son's life, but you might kill somebody else close to you. Right. It's like you can't, you cannot step outside the divine plan. Facts. You get what I'm saying? So even when you watch every movie where they say, oh, we can't do this because this will happen, like that Denzel Washington movie, Deja Vu, mm -hmm. when he figured out that they could fuck with the time and the space, but it's like, everything that you do that's gonna fuck up the future, you, you can't go back and play with the past without fucking with the future. It's like, gotcha. mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's just the laws of science. Mm -hmm. I just know for me personally, bro, before I sent my son to go get smoked, I just would have fucked niggas up and killed whoever I need to kill and just went on about my business. You see, that good intuition because, like you say, you militant. That come with you knowing what's going on. You not so, no fool. So, so we said that God don't... didn't have intuition at that moment? He didn't know they was going to kill That's not son? God. That's called divine intervention. Yeah. When you took shit into your own hands, that's when you but, intervened. But, but bro, if he the overseer and he know all, he shouldn't even create but this see, divine. But I'm saying you have the will, you have the willpower. All right, like how you say, you have the willpower to say this mm -hmm. or that. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now, the spirit gonna tell you. You already know the spirit gonna tell you to go here. Mm -hmm. Now you can easily. Everybody is easy to do the fuck shit. It's real easy to be a fuck nigga. It's so easy. Right, I can just right. be like, fuck y'all, I'm gonna be a snake. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's the easy way of living. Right. But it's harder being a real nigga to mm -hmm. even wanna grab the spirit and wanna be a divine, you know what I'm saying, walking those divine footsteps. So it's like, okay, I know I'm battling shit and I know shit is bad. All this shit that you hearing, mm -hmm. it's a fight you can't see. Mm -hmm. You understand? It ain't that these are your thoughts that you walk around. No, these are spirits and that's really fighting over your soul. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta be walking there in divine knowing that God's gonna, you know what I'm saying, be there to protect your, your footstep. But like you say, you gotta be willing to fight. I know I'm finna go out here and be fighting these motherfuckers who fucked up in the head, right. who ain't really walking in the, in the manner that I'm walking. Righteousness, but, I but need see, to that's be what you're saying. It's like, be, be ready to it fight. Is, just like it's the opposite side of righteous. I mean, if you was moving in a fucked up spirit and you was doing evil fucked up shit just right. on the regular with no remorse, then you would be moving on the side of evil. It's like, so, like I said, it's, it's science. You, you can't have one without the other. It's right, like, right. You, might, you don't have to subscribe to no religion or believe in these principles, but it's like, you're still a righteous man. Oh, for sure. So that's why you're on the side of righteousness. So <laughs> Talk your talk, look. But, so you feel like even though I don't believe, he's still looking out for oh, me. Oh, he's going to always he gonna keep people around to let you know. Okay. He's going to inform you every time. <laughs> hey, young brother. I'm here. Right. Because <laughs> you're a righteous man. You, yeah. you, you, on, you on the side of good. You walking it. Cause you, you walking Like it. you say, you already been on the side of, you know what's over there. So right. when you made the choice to not be over there, you chose up. You walk, You chose it. And, 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 and by you, when I'm hearing it, I'm divine, bro. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. That ain't, you know what I'm saying? Because he also said there'll be Gentiles that'll walk in that form of fashion, right. but there'll be fake. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing fake about you, brother. Appreciate it. You see what I'm saying? You're already one of his chosen ones, because if you weren't, it wouldn't be no stack of books right here. You, you could have kept all this to yourself. Mm -hmm. 
And like you said, this ain't just no gift. People, this is knowledge. This is wealth. This is this is, this is, this is the legacy. Of, this is part of his divine plan, bro. Exactly. These people need to hear this. This ain't this ain't. I know what you're doing. You're building a legacy. Mm -hmm. But so many people that fuck with you, he need the Congress right. to hear this. Think how many people you done already touched. Oh, like you man. say, you stopped te what teaching. What I say so many yeah. lies. But you don't can't. Understand. Right. You can't it's stop so. teaching this shit if you try. Your face is famous at this point. Right. It's your calling. Exactly. Just like how you said, you building the. You you building the, the name for the, for grace is also building the legacy that people need the doctrines exactly the the, the, the way of the, the, to live he's already showing you bro he he don't put it in that's you. exactly what this platform is for is for people like us to be able to tell people like you that what you're doing is dope and we see you and we salute you, you. Come on, man. exactly. Now shit did get heavy, man. We ain't preaching to you, we reaching to you. Cause, yes, sir. Because we know, like, bruh, look at the shit that you done achieved in America yeah, where mm -hmm. a nigga don't stand a chance. Absolutely. So, a nigga don't stand, this really look like us, bro. Yeah, man. When you, you speak, people shit. listen. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you it. You doing your motherfucking shit. Yeah, man. And you doing it, and you doing it the way that it... Yo, 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 what's happening? It's your boy DC on Fly, man. Are you tired of not knowing what to cook when you're stressed for time? Well, guess what? That's going to end right now. HelloFresh can make ease that stress and make it simple just for you. HelloFresh offers 10 to 20 minute meals, low prep recipes, and quick breakfast and lunch. Perfect for your busy schedule. You get fresh pre-measured ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. With 25 plus recipes to choose from each week, there is something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. And guess what? Y'all ain't gonna believe it. Hey, but close, close that. That's not yours, uh-huh. Because that is the pecan crusted chicken and that was amazing. Yes, I just had it. It's off the chain. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 85South14 and use code 85South14 for 14 free meals, including free shipping. Listen, if you ain't got nothing in your refrigerator, hello. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 85South14 and use code 85South14 for 14 free meals, man, including free shipping. You did. You doing it. You understand? This motherfucker done reached a lot of folk. Hell yeah, with, with good shit. You done wrote your own Bible, man. Of course now, you ain't that, gonna that believe it. one thing I'm proud of, bro, is I, I never had to compromise or be anything I didn't want to be. I came in how I wanted to, maintained it, and left out how I wanted to. I ain't, we ain't never had to tap dance or change the tune of our mm -hmm. shit or none of that, everything. Yeah, bro, shit, I'm, 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 I'm proud of my confidence in just having the balls to find things independently, because a lot of my business moves, like, I mean, we first dropped the board game. We had a conversation with, uh, I can't even remember the people name who made Monopoly, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Hasbro, yeah, one of the executives told us three things we would need to do is to soften the information in the game. Because that game talk about the sentencing, the sentencing discrepancy from powder to crack cocaine, all type of shit, the board game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they was like, we would need to change the name. Y'all ever seen the other board games where they have a city and they say Opoly? Mm -hmm. So that's basically what they were trying to make me do with that. And uh, and yeah, and basically just basically softening the information, quote unquote, but the confidence, bro, and just the ability to reinvest in myself helped us skate past all that. We never needed their help, never needed their handouts, never needed nothing. And that's we done fact. done all this shit our way. Up that's fact. Hell yeah. That's fact. Cat, I know you got I know you got a question. <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep a good question. Yes, sir. You got your tats uh, early, so you wouldn't have to go work for nobody. Now, how do these people receive you when you go and you promote everything that you're doing? Because they're going to look at you one way, but then when they get their information and how smart you are, then I'm sure their perception will change. So, how do how you approach that? Uh, well, Big Rome, to be honest with you, I actually like being the elephant in the room. I like the suspense and like the shock value that come with them judging me from the exterior, but when they find out we can articulate, we more dangerous than them, we have way less tools, and we running up a bigger bag, the conversation and the energy always change at that point. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I actually love being in those spaces. I, I, I love going places where, 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 whether it be when we board in a jet or whether it be at a dealership or a certain neighborhood, I love being in those spaces. And, and bro, I just call it disruptive intelligence. You feel me? We highly wise, but... We are gonna be silently disruptive when we come wherever you at because the energy 
And the presentation alone gonna make motherfuckers stop and turn their head to be like, who is that and what's going on? Right. This right, is another right. question I gotta ask you, man. You got this big ass chain with a legend on there, man, Nipsey Hustle. Like he cemented in in history, in the community, in the Absolutely. culture, bro. It's like how big of an impact did his life, career, music have on you? I got you, bro. Uh so this goes back to something we were just talking about. That boy, that profound. That, that boy, that. Yeah, bro. Nip, nip to me is what that Bible say Jesus is. That's, that's to me. To me, that was Let me a fuck physical you up, being then. I was able to be around. What if he was Jesus? Just what if? I mean, bro, that, that, that's an awesome what if, but I know, like, the times we spent when I was around him, it was... It was definitely either somewhere between Army and St. Nipsey. That's what I do know. Right. But I feel what you're saying. What if? What if? Yeah. You know, Jesus was a real nigga. He had 12 disciples, man. They was some nuggethead. You know what I'm saying? But Moses kept a stick. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yep. <laughs> nigga but what they don't the tell you is the 12 disciples, they was called the Rolling 12. Nobody ever say that part. No, they was called the Rolling 12. <laughs> They was on the nigga ass. You can't say that because that, 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 that gangster disciple. It now. wasn't just 12. Yeah, 12. They was deep as fuck. Yeah. That was just the name of the hood. Neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Look how they did Jesus. Yeah. Nah, I feel you, bro. But, yeah, bro, we, um, um, Nip was one of the first people to support me. And it was crazy because that happened to be, like, one of the only rappers I had really subscribed to that I felt like. Right. Was was giving us that solid, real man gangster shit, but also feeding our minds at the same time. So um, yeah, bro, this this the the piece I got after his passing. Got his yeah. birthday, took forever. One of his one of his sayings, and yeah, bro, this is actually one of my favorite pieces. I don't wear it that often no more. I really wear my light jewelry. I don't I don't wear these a lot no more because they hurt a whole lot. But yeah, this this my biggest piece for now. But I got another one coming. The piece alone, three and a half kilos, and the chain, 1.5. So I'm going to bring that one out sometime around Thanksgiving. Bad. What's, what's some of your top Nipsey songs? Uh, Mark My Words. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, bro, every song he ever made with Ross. Uh, the outro to Crenshaw. Uh, I mean, shit, if, we, if, we, if I had just picked on Victory Lap, I would say... Uh, Young nigga, uh, him and CeeLo, shit, that's really my favorite one. Bro, that's really why I got the piece two kilos, because he said two kilos on my neck like the fucking 80, so it was only right I went and made sure it was two kilos, but. Right. Yeah, bro, those those probably like my top five for him. That's what's up, bro. That's facts. What else you want to leave him with, man? Um, One thing I want to leave him with, bro, is, y'all, the censorship and the controlling of our individual thoughts it's fucking like, it's, it's shit at an all time high. This shit crazy. You feel me? So that's the whole reason why I took it upon myself to retire from that literature and teaching shit and really go fully independent to we own our own uh, bandwidth. We coded our whole shit independently, but we rolling out DGTV. This gonna be a platform, you know, similar to such where motherfuckers can be themselves. Right. Ain't no censorship, no rules and regulations, ain't none of that. Uh, I want to give a shout out to one of our signees. I want to officially share it on here. My bro was just here, but Black Rambo officially signed with DGTV. Hey! Uh, Black Rambo. Yeah, that's, that's my bro. We got some crazy. We've been working on some crazy shit. I can't wait till y'all see it. <laughs> that's what's up, man. Black Rambo crazy. So what's the submission process for the independent creators? They're going to be sending it, man. Oh, yeah, bro. So like right now, we actually cast them for two uh, new shows. Um... Like I said, my brother been down 11 years, and he had a lot of loopholes in his case. So any attorney that's watching this that can practice in the state of Florida, we literally have an open cast of car right now where I personally, I'm going to pay you a quarter million dollars if you can get my brother home, and you get a one-year contract with DGTV. Another casting call is me and the wife are currently looking for a girlfriend. So we working on that show. We got like eight other shows that we got. <laughs> hey, man, you got to give me some Come on, on man. They did talk, say man. you was a marketing genius. <laughs> yeah, I've been on this bitch for this long, and I've never thought to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, bro, we... Uh, we we here, too, those, man. Those, those, me and saying. my wife, bro. That's a million-dollar T-shirt. I won't have... I won't end on that. Me and my wife looking for a girlfriend. That's fact. Bro, we selling them bitches all at Disneyland everywhere. <laughs> in church. Me and my wife looking for a girlfriend. You understand? But yeah, bro, man, we got the, we got, it's DGTV, y'all. We got the network coming out in a couple weeks. Uh, <laughs> man, listen, y'all, we got comedy, fitness, 
Comedy. Me, me and the wife and the kids, we got a whole reality show, bro. We got that a right lot of shit going comedy. on. Comedy. Yeah, Pop your sure. shit, man. For sure, bro. I you got... ain't said nothing about no comedy. <laughs> so, so I got a show right now. You going back? Oh, oh, no, bro. We, we definitely into that. Let's do it. We we'll put that bitch so, on like, BGTV. I know show, shows like Family Matters don't air so much <clears> no more. So I know me and my attorney was recently talking about uh, us licensing that, you know, temporarily right. so people go Anytime watch we have people on here, I always pitch shows and shit. Right. All right, check this out. Go crazy. It's a show, right? I got you. The kids is trying to get their mom out the gang. Out the gang? <laughs> they, mama, mother, they mama is a motherfucking, she's she a, a She a whole gangster. Oh, okay. Won't stop gang banging. <laughs> she won't stop what? Her 50th birthday coming up. She won't stop. What, what, what size she is? Huh? What size she is? I didn't, we ain't even decided all that yet. Right. But she just in the streets real heavy. <laughs> Kids are successful. They graduated college and everything. Game back. But they mom, they always got to go get their mom out some shit. She ain't got no license. <laughs> Be drinking and shit. All right, we'll talk about she it. Got a nah, bro, look, so look, that's, that's the writer right there, Khadijah. Khadijah. So look, you get a thought of her, bro. She the name of the show is and My Mama a Thug. I want to go straight to the DVD. <laughs> said, my mama's a thug. My mama thug. <laughs> I got a good show because my brother want me to trick. Go ahead. Trick him on the intervention. He said, that's the only way I do it. Now, you we got to trick him into going to intervention? See, he want to do the intervention. We need the black he version of intervention. He said, I'm going to act like I you got the title code. already. Oh, okay. gonna be crazy. Get off that shit. <laughs> When we help people uh, get off that shit. And see, see, the title gotta be, it gotta be real. It is real. I'ma act like I'm off that shit. That's the, that's Wait, gonna that's have to be the follow up. Act like I'm off that shit. That's the follow up. When he get out, he when he get out. Oh, so you just gonna come in here and act like you ain't on that shit? Man, go ahead, man. man stop playing with me. Ain't nobody doing nothing, man. man. Go ahead, bro. We gonna throw it to Khadijah, then Khadijah gonna script it out, turn it into a movie. She yeah, look at here, man. I think she's like a three-time, four-time best-selling author as well. Pop your shit. Okay, baby. Shout out to Khadijah. Which one Khadijah? Which because I'm looking at motherfucking mother like, my name ain't Khadijah. And we all know Derek like freaky shit. So look, on some late night shit, we need to have a show where it's just ladies with pretty feet just come through and wear like new house shoes and shit. Hey, niggas Guess what it's called? Ain't gotta be pretty feet now. Nah. It gotta be everything. From the ankles down. Uh, just feet. Just feet? Just you feet. Got feet fit. That's, That's a good idea. Suck we might toes need to jot that one down. Old ass nigga we sucking toes, man. We have a feet on there. Put your feet in my mouth, ass nigga. <laughs> and Say, you know what? Come here, you know what come mouth. on right after that? <laughs> what? Finding work pants. Finding work pants. Finding work pants. We gonna travel all around the country and just find women that's fine and they work pants. Oh, fine and we gonna and just pants. give them so much respect and love mm -hmm. for coming to work fine on a Wednesday. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. that, that would be a good show. Buy them lunch. Work pants. Finding work pants. The little women that be having the little lawyer suits. Ooh. I'm talking about like. Like KFC CEO. managers, oh, yeah, Taco little, Bell, little blue, little assistant blue cake, managers. Little blue cake with the little pie yeah. on them. They shit. Got to have a little pie on them. Yeah, they shit. Because mm, you know the whole thing about them pants is like, it's supposed like to make it look day. like you ain't got no ass. Right, right, right. But when she came to work and she had like her work belt and it got the little dent in the back, mm, Lord. She said a little booty crack a little bit. Bro. When she bent over, you like, Lord. Ooh. Lord. Got a little tissue in Lord. <laughs> Hey, bro, you know what? I did have one thing I want, one more thing I want to share with y'all. Hold oh, up, before you do that, okay. it's not right if you come on the show and you don't get a piece of something from my guy right here, New Face. He, always, he got all kind of oh, bro, shit. I know New Face, bro. New Face, what you bring? What you done brought? That's my thing, that's my bro for a long time. But this one thing y'all didn't talk about, like, I, if you look at the back of this album, he's not a rapper, but he's a Grammy-nominated artist. Who? Me. And he Derek don't even like to talk about it. He said he don't like to talk his shit so a lot. look at the back and see what my bad, New Faith. We he got, know, he got bro. a whole song <laughs> on Rush the Five Nine he album. He really just snapped. No, no, he like y'all ain't talk about it, but I'ma just. No, nah, man, nigga, we just grab it, number they had to just talk about it. Fuck, nigga, huh? Look on the back and read. Mr. Grace. <laughs> Damn, no, new face. face. He, early in the interview, he said he don't really like to just pop his shit too much. But I told never him. Never seen new face mad, bro. You all right, bro? He like read the back. I'm gonna like, give it a shot tonight, bro. I'm gonna give nigga, it a talk did, your did. shit, bro. I ain't never seen we good. Which, which, which one I'm focused Pick on? Pick you one. Okay, so look, I'm gonna talk my shit real quick. My bad. Listen, I just want to remind y'all. You feel me? I'm gonna take a line from Bret Hart. I'm the best that ever was. I'm the best that is, and I'm the best that ever will be. Ain't no family fucking with mine. Ain't none of y'all children cooler, more dangerous, more wise. Ain't nobody fucking with me. Mentally, I'm the most dangerous nigga the planet got right now. There is not another nigga that came out of 1989 that's fucking with me. My family gonna be one of the most dangerous, one of the most 
unfuckwittable and one of the most wealthy. And I told y'all, we done chasing them M's. If it's not a B, I ain't got shit to talk about. So we leveraging our own platform. I put all my own dough up. We got a 40-something person team, and we, they killing shit as we speak. I'm on set with the bros, and they back in Florida shooting, running shit down. I'm turning niggas into stars. We don't look for deals. We sign people, and we, we give them deals. You feel me? I'm going to wrap it up. My, my old lady, finer and more nurturing and nastier and flyer than anybody's. You feel me? And y'all, y'all know what me. I ain't got to take too much. You feel me? <laughs> and shout out to my mom and daddy while I'm on here, dad. You a stand-up nigga. Listen, my daddy from 125th and Broadway. He from the hood. And he retired Secret Service. He gave me the best of both worlds. That's why I'm one of the most dangerous niggas y'all going to ever come across. Because I could play on both tracks. I, I know more than a lot of people in our world. And I know way more than the motherfuckers y'all think are actually our oppressors. I, I run them niggas in my world. Right. And there we go. I just talk my shit. Man. 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 I know it's a white folk man, like, God damn it, boy, that motherfucker. I don't know who he's talking to. Hey, yeah, look. Ooh, that's the and one listen. where they were like, turn that goddamn <laughs> shit off. Hey, listen. No, he had me all the <laughs> way up until the end. Turn he it had off. me. He had me. Hey, I was a look. fan. Look, look, look. Watch that goddamn shit again. <laughs> hey, y'all, and we put our own dough up, and we got our own guns, you feel me? Bum. So however motherfucker ever wanted to meet us in life, we practice preventative maintenance. Bum, bum, we'll be there, bum, bum. and we'll, we'll, we'll push bum, right past bum, bum, bum. So y'all ain't canceling shit. I'm going to talk my shit to the day I die, and we're going to keep shit. winning. And y'all going to keep seeing them happy black children running around, Yo. ruling shit, and being mentally dangerous. That's right, because we about to make some more. Fuck me. As a bro, I'm, I mean, at, you bro, I'm, I'm actually working I want right 10. now. Number seven. See? Seven? Yeah. I want 10. Number seven. I'm going to catch up. I'm going to get two. I'm going to just get... I got one. Okay. <laughs> I got one. Seven is your hand, I got man. One. I had to make sure I was doing this shit. That nigga, nigga, wait. I'm going to have a bunch of them at once, and then I done fucked up all three of them. Nope. I had to make sure I was good. No, bro, I respect that, bro. Look, people... Bro, people don't do that, and they subject their children to the 10 years of fucked up living because niggas just want to be irresponsible with sex. Right. Children don't ask you for this welcome party to the world. You force it on them. You supposed to make this shit as breezy as possible. So. Hey, you know I what? respect that, bro. The best Damn. fucking birth control I ever came across in my life <laughs> was a baby mama. Hey. That's it. Why the fuck? Man, come on, man. You got your tired down, man. Home. You know how, like, in life, you can fuck up, and then it's like, if you don't just, if you stop doing it, it'll just be like, yeah, that's right. just some shit you did. If right. you don't tell nobody, they don't know. Right. Nigga, everybody know when your fuck up is the baby mama, you get, it's, it's right there. Oh, damn, so you saying the baby mama is the fuck up. I'm just saying. <laughs> he like, that's the fuck up. I mean, hey, man. I fucked up. <laughs> It's just like when it's just like when your 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 uncle or somebody pick you up from school. They be like, "Who ride is that?" <laughs> and mine. He said, "I can't run from it." Y'all was right. fucking. We did. <laughs> I feel that, bro. <laughs> and they asked, "Do we did?" We did. Yeah. It's not me. I just know some niggas with some terrible baby mamas. I know one nigga, man. This nigga, he can't, huh? his face don't even smile no more. <laughs> that nigga ain't been happy in so long. He's just, he's just, Your friend. He's just a great dad, but. So bro, look, he probably need to check out the co-parenting curriculum I wrote. No, it's not about co-parenting. It's just, okay. it's just done moment. at this point. It's, okay. it's, over. it's over. That nigga hope gone. Is that it? Is this how you ever seen a, a nigga with no hope? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's he just, unfortunate. He just don't even try no more. He's just like, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> He's like, you ain't never had a break. Some niggas just didn't gave up, bro. What? You stupid, bro. Shout out to all the baby mamas, man. It's a lot of baby daddies who ain't shit. I'm not, I'm not trashing or, or you know making fun yeah. of the baby mamas. Shout it's, out to all our baby mamas. I love you. Hell yeah. Shout out to my baby mama too. You right, man. Shout out to baby mama. I was shouting out to everybody, baby mama. I just, you know, bring some positivity to the community. Right. Shout out to my baby mama. She's a great mother. Hell yeah, yeah. Eat your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna catch up with y'all. Me and my girlfriend man. looking for a girlfriend, huh? I'm about to find me a, uh, I'm about to get me some new baby mamas. New bro, baby you mamas gonna, coming soon. Bro, you got to pull up. Uh, no, I ain't getting no baby mamas. Wild or no, I ain't gonna get 600 wild. Man, that shit on him. Like, man, he said it. Mm. <laughs> I'm already, a, I'm already a whole baby daddy out here. I got you. <laughs>
You might, you might try to get it. I don't we know how I'm going to make baby number two yet. I don't know if I'm going to be like, I'm, I don't know what approach yeah, to take. Me, don't, don't, I don't, don't know don't, if don't, I need don't, to take, like, the sucking in love approach or do I need to be like, do I need to just, like, pick me who I like and then trap her? I don't know what bro, I'm bro, doing bro, yet. Bro, just, just grab who you like and let them know. You what know, you're in is. a rush right now, so you just need her to carry it. I ain't in a rush, though. Okay. I'm just trying to see, like... You just don't want the relationship, you just want the baby. No, nah, it's not even that. <laughs> he, he just didn't want the baby. It's not that, because I told you, that shit too rough. Right. Co-parenting. That's yeah. why you write a book about it. Because right. if it was easy, everybody could do it. Right. It is a struggle, bro. It definitely could be a struggle. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Especially when motherfuckers ain't on the same page. Yeah. That's a fact. Hell yeah. You trying to teach the baby about guns and shit, and she ain't with it. Right. Bro, that's why I tell everybody, parenthood is a competition. You feel me? So you either gonna be your child's biggest influence or the music, TV, the homegirl, the homeboy, right. whatever the case, or the teacher shit. So that's fact. Whether, even when sometimes with mom and dad, when I say com competitive, I don't mean to try to take each other out. I mean, whatever game and information you're trying to impute into your child, you gotta be overly consistent, because somebody gonna get their mind. Right. Yeah. Shout out to all the teachers out there, man. The good ones. The good ones. The good ones. And I always wonder, you know how everybody had that story where they be like, my teacher told me I wasn't gonna never be shit. Yeah, yeah bro, doc, doc, Shut doc, up, you Dr. just Freeman. ain't shit. Her name was Dr. Freeman. Uh, <laughs> she told you you wasn't gonna be shit? Yeah, bro, it was King High School, Dr. Freeman, 12th grade. She told me, she was like, well, that, that's why, she didn't say I wasn't gonna be, she was like, that's probably why, why you're not gonna grow up and get a decent job or be able to make no real money. That's not that's even how thing. you make no real money. That's right. the same thing just in the corporate world, like, you ain't gonna grow up and get no decent job or make no good money. Like, bitch, I ain't shit. Right. Yeah, that's basically what she wanted to say, but she ain't <laughs> say it like that. Oh. <laughs> Bitch, I wouldn't be shit, dude. Does every school have that teacher that's yeah, going around yeah, telling bro. students? You ain't never going to be shit. Yes, bro. Mm -hmm. Facts. I had that shit said to me, too. I'm like, I laughed at the hood, though. For real? <laughs> and then one day, their children bring them, the, bring them the phone, and they'll be like, Mom, look at this dude on YouTube. And you be like, God damn. damn. Look at that motherfucker. He not only became shit, but he influencing my children. I seen my teacher. He tried to hide from me. Call his ass slipping. Mm. We had one teacher that sold weed on the side. <laughs> I knew shit was hard then. <laughs> I used That's to sell what... weed in my teacher. Nah, I'm talking about the teacher. Oh, you, he would sell weed on the side. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't have that. I mean, you know it. I ain't getting caught. You talking about the paper? Paper? Yeah, I did it. Yeah. Nah, the teacher, he, he had, he was trying to like supplement the income. That was his side hustle. He used to sell weed on the weekend. On the weekend, like after school, he was still, I can't, all right, whatever. I had not gave him teacher some weed. I had not got caught gambling. I had gave him some weed, so he wanted to snitch, um, snitch on me. I ain't gave the teacher shit. He was like, give me some weed, because I know you said it. I was that motherfucker who used to have, like the teacher used to have to come get me out the hallway for leaving early, like, you know You one of them kids that leave. I was the first motherfucker out of the class. Get out. For hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -uh. She used to stand by the door. You're not leaving out of here until three o'clock. I'm like, well, you're gonna be standing right there, cause if you move, you out of here. I'm out of there. Yo, 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 classroom must have no doors or something. Nah, that's what I'm saying. She was standing in front of the door. Why, why the fuck would I be in a class with no doors? <laughs> I don't know, cause my class ain't had no doors. Nigga, I was good at school. Yeah, like, how got in? Huh? How y'all got in? It was just like a little dough. Like, like inside, some class had doughs, then some it was just like. No, I you went, to a, I went class, to a great guys. school. Oh, we had no doors. Y'all so, so, so. ain't no push. You just walk straight in the class. Right, right, I got it. Like anybody can walk in and be like, who in the class? I went to a great school. We had all doors. It was great. Oh, he's crazy. Yeah. I learned a lot of shit. But the shit that I know. It's obsolete now. I knew that when I was trying to help my son with his schoolwork. I don't know none of this right, shit right. no more. No, bro, I understand. What you, I, I, I've struggled with. Now, I'm a kid for real, bro. Third grade bro. shit, because it's just been so long since I've seen it. So how you do it? Because you got five girls, so I got two. And I know them, them girls, you got to be attentive. Absolutely. I'm talking about they needy. Yeah, bro, so like one, like one of my children, uh, my three-year-old is autistic. So she's very needy. Like, she requires a lot of attention. So, bro, just having a schedule in the system and... Um, I retired my mom in 2018. Right. The wife did the same for her mama last year. So like, in my neighborhood is 13 cribs. Uh, I got a couple of them. So my mama literally down the street. So between us as 
playing like the mom and dad role. They got her mom in the house, and then my mama two houses down. So, right. it so it's like, a good foundation. Yeah, yeah, bro. It definitely right. it take a village, just a village of graces. I don't do that village shit. So if you a nephew or uncle or a neighbor, please don't hit my children because you're going to get probably fuck around and get shot. When I say village, I mean between me, my lady, and the mamas. Not all that, that old school village shit. But yeah, bro, right, we have right. a good foundation. So, bro, I'm just, especially with my daughters, I do have to be nurturing. And like, that's something I'm learning even more so now, just being emotionally right, intelligent. Right, or right, right. Don't, like, we can't keep dismissing our daughter's tears by saying you too pretty to cry. Right. Niggas really got to start breaking down. Why is she actually crying? How can I rectify that? You feel me? We don't want to build them up to where they <laughs> genuinely start to feel like at 20, I shouldn't express myself because I'm a pretty girl, so I'm going to hold these tears back and suppress how I feel. Mm-hmm. So just emotional intelligence, bro, learning how to nurture them more and just teaching them how to kill people if they ever have an issue. Oh, that's facts. Yeah. See? My daughter you always get extreme. <laughs> I always got to throw the extreme shit at the end. My daughter play with the Barbies all day, yeah. and I don't want to help. Like, she be like, come play with me, daddy, and I don't be like, well, hold up, baby. Then I'm missing time on playing with my daughter. Right. I got to grab that Barbie. Man, get, get your get ass world. over there, man, and yeah, talk I mean, your shit. Yeah, bro. We flipping all me, day. All right. I tell parents is, like, children can relate <clears throat> to us way more at eye level. So, like, a lot of times when I speak to my children, I get on my knees, and I get eye level with my daughters. And also, bro, for the adults, it's almost like a form of like decompressing because it actually brings us back to an, a state of nostalgia when we actually was that size and running around. So right. that's one tactic I really use every day with my children. I get on my knees and talk to them. We get our level. They don't feel like I'm a superior standing over them. And you got, you, you got some good ass knees, but I can't, I can't. <laughs> she got hardwood flow, you understand me? I be dragging the pillow with me everywhere I go. <laughs> Let me put the pillow down right. before I get down here and talk to you. Nah, man, you came through and you put us up on a whole lot of game, man. Bro, I got one more thing to put y'all up on. All right, bet. Come on, man, give her the uh, game. I don't know which business this is, like the fifth or the sixth one, buddy. See? What's that? Your knee bothered. You try to play that shit out. That shit hurt. But yeah, bro, I got an art business. Uh, the name of it is The Grace Essentials. I told you I'm big on my last name. So uh, my partner came up with this dope ass idea. Your last name Grace. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah we stamped that shit over right here. I know. Grace. You can't avoid it, man. 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 Dude, you know how so close yeah, bro, he is. Me and my, um, <laughs> well, not actually me. I'm giving all the credit to my partner, but he came up with this dope ass idea to uh, present y'all with something. You feel me? As, a, as an honor, a gift of our appreciation, and especially a, a token of his appreciate, appreciation, because he's, he's the one that actually created it. So, Alvin, if you could slide over here, bro, and, 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 and show them what we're delivering today. Oh, shit. Oh, that fire. Man, shit, look bro. at this. We got to put it in the trap. We got to put it in the trap, man. Hey, man, thank you. How the hell did you sneak that big ass shit in here? I seen that nigga. I ain't know what he was doing. Nah, man, I fuck with it. Thank you, man. That's dope. You ain't retarded, Joey. Coloring book? Basically, I'm big on representing the people who are living. We don't want to wait till they dead to honor them like MLK. And all that stuff. So y'all are doing big things for the black community. So what I want to do is the people who we present. Hold up, man. Hey, yeah, we gotta hit that shit. Yeah, bro, we've been sitting <coughs> on this for like a month and a half. What? Shit. shit. You sitting on this? Yeah. That shit crazy. Hold on. I gotta get that shit. Mm-hmm. Look, Somebody through the whole pandemic, gang. That shit crazy. Thank you, man. We putting this up. Be hard. Move them over. (laughs) (laughs) Hold up. Man, I'm going to the condo today, boy. I'm tired. I'm going home. Ooh. What's that, village? You got land? You got acres? Yes. He close. That shit crazy. He just want you to know he close. Shit is crazy, man. Right. He close, yeah. baby. You gonna take that initial step. Damn, this they should have put Craig on that bitch. <laughs> 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 It'd be hard. 
good to go? All right, so, yeah, so basically what we do when we present it to all the big people that we present to, we want to make it a way so y'all can earn money as well as an asset. So we're gifting it to y'all, but it's an asset for y'all. So as you know, with art, it appreciate with time. Facts. So with this, two ways, or it's a multiple ways y'all gonna make money. So one, when we do a coloring book, it's gonna have this, this similar uh, portrait collage, and then we're gonna, you'll be able to get royalties when a coloring book sold, because we can do like 100, top 100 black leaders. Right that are currently living, and we're gonna push it to the school districts and stuff like that. Right. And that's one way you get royalties. Another one, I feel all know about NFTs. Yeah. So, I'm gonna create this as an NFT. Then once it sells, you get a percentage of that as well. Also, when we put this on the website, and it sells, you'll get 30% of the net profit when those prints limited edition sells. So, it's just a, it's just a, a thing where everyone wins. Right. The art collector wins, as in DG. You went as an art piece. And also, if you wanted to gift this, let's say that you got this piece and you wanted to put it in TI's uh, Trap Museum, whatever it may be, y'all can gift this to him and it'll be a tax deductible for the 85 South Show. Man, and we know the plug. You know what I'm Thank you, man. That's big no shit. Problem, Wait, appreciate, we appreciate y'all, that. Man. Brought some okay, assets man. through this bitch. Yeah, so, yeah. It's y'all, man, so I appreciate y'all, everything y'all do. Thank you, bro. That's love. Don't fuck with it, man. 85 South Show, the coldest nah, podcast brother. out here, man. Shake your hand, gang. Exactly. Love, brother. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Where y'all want me to lean this up at? Um, she she right, right there. <laughs> right there. On Jasmine. <laughs> 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 You know the old man can't say nothing, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, man. Shit, come on, man. Shit, come on, man. I said, yeah. You know what I said? Hey, you know what I said? Hey, but you. Hey, hey. Let me say, ho, ho, ho. Hey. That motherfucker's still hey, moving, hey. man. Yeah. Hey, hey, what you talking about? <laughs> hey. I ain't said nothing. Hey. I ain't seen nothing. Oh, there go my wife. Hey. You better not say nothing, neither. <laughs> no, I ain't did nothing. Ain't nobody looking at nobody. Ain't nothing. Ain't nobody looking at nobody. Hey, what is she talking about? You saw them Falcon? Mm. Saw them Falcon? Did they win? No. I'm so scared. Oh, shit. I'm so shit. I ain't mean to bring it up. All right. Been losing money since 98. Look, man, <laughs> we've been wrapping this shit up for a minute, but yes, sir. we ain't gonna keep you in here, man. It's just you got great vibe, on, great energy, great Appreciate spirit, y'all, man. Y'all, Don't let this be the last time, bro. I know you're about to get out the game and shit. Come on, man. Come on, we I need know you're getting out the, the game. We need the books, man. But, man, you can come in here and talk your shit in the trap anytime you want to, man. Especially when you get the new chain. At least tag us in the uh, photo yeah, or sure. something. For sure. Man, man. I'm gonna take the chain on tour for sure. Most definitely. Yeah. That's what's up. Well, shit. Oh, we got some gifts for you, too, then. I ain't know if the gifts had got here yet. Thank you, bro. There go, my guy. Put my... Hey, hold up, man. You know, my people, man. They will see. They get me right, man. They support me out, but I'm going to make sure you get some of this shit. Exactly. Okay. Coach's podcast. Everybody got feet, so everybody needs socks. (laughs) I'm on death. We're going to make sure you get some of this shit, too, guy. Appreciate it. I'm on death. I appreciate it. You know, yeah, yeah, man, give your cameraman one of them yeah, hats Russell, or something. Look. Or bust the top out, however y'all dread do it, man. Yeah, yeah, no, bro, look, these, these going straight in the art room. I got an art I'm gallery. Like, I'm not these stupid. These going straight in the art room. Matter of fact, bro, can I get these signed? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. In the art room. You want it on the bill? I need a friend, too. I need a friend. <laughs> I'm the poet's one here. No, you're not, bro. Appreciate y'all, bro. I'm going to put faith on here. <laughs> well, yeah, man, we got you some swag bag and all that shit, man. Well, look, DC, what you leaving them with, bro? Man, shit, this shit from Spain. Spain. <laughs> <laughs> you already know what's happening. Hey, man, nah, man. But you know what I'm saying? More shit popping off. You know what I'm saying? More deals on the way. More TV show, more movie. Matter of fact, I think the movie with me, Ro Tim, and uh, Jason, Milson, uh, Jason Mitchell and uh, Carrie Hilson. Um, I just saw the bro last week. Shout out to Jason Mitchell. Mo Diffie, that's the OG, that's my boy. Uh, for the love of money. That shit dropped in November. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, we thugging it. 
Shit going it. crazy. Thugging it and loving it. You did? Hell yeah. I got a movie coming out with me, DC, and Chico. It's gonna be about the 85 South show. We we right, we're working right. on it. We're working, out. On, working on it. Working on it. Ken, you can stop clapping. I already, I'm getting Anthony Anderson to play your part. <laughs> I already talked to him. <laughs> I already talked to him. He said him. he with it. He with it. <laughs> I was going to get Terrence Howard to be J-O-N, but I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't it's know the, how to DJ, between, man. It's up between him and the dude that played Antoine Fish. Hell nah, no, you can't put no yeah. dog skin nigga right there with J-O-N. Yeah, I could. That's, that's how, that's too what how I'm doing. Too much shadow behind my head. That's right. too much. Okay. You, you, you got to have a light skin nigga. Who I'm getting to play, Joe? Yeah. Um, the nigga off Seinfeld. <laughs> What's the crazy nigga who called nah, everybody a nigga? No, nah, we're not, we not yeah. using him. Nah. We're not using him. Every time I see you, like about the dude from All About the Benjamins that was the photographer. Who like, no, Frank, Frank Chesco. Nice nails. Frank fucking Chesco. <laughs> we're getting him to play Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm replacing everybody. I was thinking of trying to get Tracy Morgan to play Nav. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking though, I don't know. Either either like either uh, Tracy Morgan or Keenan. Keenan from uh Keenan the Kid. Yeah. <laughs> what about Corey? From in the house? Mm-hmm. That's a raven, little brother. Okay, well, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who gonna play Chad? Yeah. The nigga off Evie Stevie, what a white boy name? <laughs> <laughs> Niggas in Transformer, the crazy nigga. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yeah, you can be Shia LaBeouf, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> or the little light skinned nigga from Holes. <laughs> digging up those hoes, digging. <laughs> yeah, it's going down though. The movie gonna be crazy. What it's called? Oh, the 85 South Blue? Hell yeah. It's gonna be all about how we won the lottery and started a podcast. In fact. But it was off the of scratch off. It wasn't a lot of money. We don't reveal that until the later on. We ball out. Yeah. But then once we find out how much we really won, right. we really got to take the podcast shit serious because now we done spent all this money. On some, like some Martin shit. Remember mm -hmm. Martin had an episode, they yeah. bought all that shit and yeah. won like $4? Exactly. Yeah. But it is going to be more than $4, but it just ain't going to yeah. be what we thought we had. I got a whole yeah. bunch of movies and shit coming out independently. I'm not even making big budget films, so don't even expect it. <clears throat> I, got a, I got a movie that's coming out that's called The $10,000 Movie. <laughs> It's mostly just me. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's from my perspective. You get busy with 10K in the right camera, man. Hey, man. You, you, you can do it. No, nah, because nowadays... GoPros the... ain't, got that much, they ain't got that much audio. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about this shit off camera, man. We done gave him too much shit. What is... Thank you. Okay. Hey, we gotta give a big shout out to BET for letting do. us host the BET Awards. We definitely do. Come on, BET. Big for the what? culture, man. Fucking family right there, man. And we gonna do that shit again. Yeah, yeah. I hope they better call I'm it. manifesting that shit. Absolutely. Hey, man. You gotta speak it, bro. Bring it to fruition. It's facts. Been another dope ass episode. I know we've Come been on, saying bye for a minute, but we leaving for real this time. We gotta go, The man. big t shirt win. I'm, not, I'm just playing. The t-shirt ain't that big, but whatever. We out of here. 85 South Shore. It need to be at least over your head, baby. Ain't for real. <laughs> we out of here. Tell y'all nigga tripping on a bit. Play, Play us some graduation pussy. music, man. <laughs> what wrong with the carpet? It must be moving DC, or let's grab this flick right quick. Oh, let's do it, gang violence. I got to go water the grass. Don't pee on yourself. Boy, we don't get old. I can't hold that shit. Pee pee, boy. I done, had to, I done went off the spreadway like three times last week. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Boy, your bladder getting weak. Boy, I had to find a gas station. Oh, my <laughs> I ain't young no more. Hell no. Appreciate you. Thank bro. you for coming yeah, through, man. Okay.
on your farewell man. tour. Like what we got? Oh, no, nah, it love, brother. I know he get with it. It gonna hit you. I ain't tripping. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't be the man who I am if I just allow it not to happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah.